Obsidian, that's a powerful note-taking app that is based on markdown files. And best of all, it's possible to extend Obsidian by writing your own plugins. And today I'm going to show you how you can build your own Obsidian plugin step by step. Everything you need to know for this video can be found on this GitHub repository, which is the first link in the description down below. So at first you need a few requirements and that is of course Obsidian itself, which I guess you have already installed if you are watching this video. Then you need Git, which is a version control system for your code. You also need a GitHub account, so just go to github.com and create your own account. Then you will need to install Node.js, which is a runtime for JavaScript code. You will also need a text editor where you can write your code and I will recommend Visual Studio Code for that. And lastly I recommend you to have some basic TypeScript knowledge because that's the language that we are going to code our plugin in. If at some point in this video you might get stuck then I highly recommend you to check out the unofficial Obsidian plugin development documentation by Markus Olsen. Here you can find the most important information around developing an Obsidian plugin. But now we are actually getting started with creating our own plugin. And the first step in this process is that you go to the official Obsidian sample plugin and click this use this template button here and then create a new repository. This is where the code of your plugin will be stored and you have to enter a name for your plugin. In my case I will just call it Obsidian Plugin Tutorial. GitHub will now basically create a copy of the official template inside your own account. For the purpose of this tutorial I'm going to create a new obsidian vault, but you could just as well use your existing vault. Now we will continue by installing our newly created obsidian plugin into our vault. And to do this you have to go to your obsidian settings, head to community plugins and then turn on community plugins. Now you have to download the code from github to your local machine. To do this go to your github repository and click on this code button here and then copy this URL. Then you have to open a terminal window and cd into your obsidian vault. In my case the vault is located inside the download slash tutorial directory and inside your vault you should have a dot obsidian directory. So let's cd into it. This is where your obsidian configuration files are located in. Here you have to create a plugins directory if it doesn't already exist and this can be done with the help of the make directory command. Now you should see a plugins directory inside the .obsidian directory. Now you can cd into this plugins directory and type git clone and then paste the URL that you have copied earlier. This command has now downloaded the code from github and put it inside the plugins directory. Now I'm going to open this directory inside my code editor. In this directory you have a bunch of files of which the most important one is this main.ts file. This is where the code for your plugin will be located in. But after opening this file you can see that there are some errors from your IDE. And this is because we haven't installed the dependencies for our code yet. But don't worry this can easily be done by running npm install. This command will look inside the package.json file and download all the dependencies that are listed here. This command will also create a node modules folder where all the dependencies are listed. Before we can try out this plugin inside Obsidian, we actually have to compile this TypeScript code into a JavaScript file. And you can do this by running npm run dev. As you can see, a main.js file has now been created. And this code will also listen for changes inside your main.ts file and rebuild your code as soon as you save it. The main.js file is what Obsidian will actually use to run your plugin. So let's head back to Obsidian and here you can see that the plugin didn't appear yet. And that's because you have to reload Obsidian to reload all of the plugins. You can do this by pressing Ctrl P and typing reload and then you need to select reload app without saving. If you now head back to your settings, under the community plugins tab you should now see that there is the sample plugin. Which means that Obsidian has successfully found our plugin. So let's head back into the code and start writing our own plugin from scratch. To do this I'm going to delete everything from the main.ts file. The entry point to each obsidian plugin is a class that has to be exported from the main file. Hence I'm going to create a class with the name of example plugin. And we also need to export this class so we will add export default in front of it. We also need to extend our own class with the code from the Obsidian API. And this can be done by writing extends plugin. And this plugin class itself has to be imported from the Obsidian package like this. 
The code for your plugin will be written inside this class. So let's do something really basic. If you press control space, you can see that there are some methods you can implement in this class. And we are interested in the onload method, which will run as soon as your plugin is loaded by Obsidian. And for simplicity, I will just add a console log hello world to this method. So save your file and make sure that the npm run dev command is still running so that the TypeScript file is still automatically compiled into this JavaScript file. And now you can go back to Obsidian and reload Obsidian without saving and then head back to your community plugin settings. To see the console log in action, we have to open the developer tools, which can be done by pressing Ctrl Shift I. And if we now enable our plugin, you can see that hello world was printed to the console. In the next step, let's change the title and the description of our plugin. This can be done inside the manifest.json file. This is the name of the plugin, so let's change it to example plugin and here is the description. If you want, you can also put your name in the author section and for example link your website. Now save this file and go back to Obsidian and then reload Obsidian. Now the title and the author of the plugin has changed. Now we will continue by implementing a small feature to extend the capabilities of Obsidian. By default, Obsidian has a plugin enabled which counts the words and the characters of your file. And with our plugin we will extend this functionality to also count the number of lines in the active file. So let's get back to the editor and start writing some code. We will start by adding a new text to the status bar. To do this you need to type this dot and then you should already see a list of methods and properties that you can call from within this class. Those properties are coming from the class that we have extended up here. Here you can find a method that is called add status bar item. We will call this method. As you can see here, this method returns an HTML element, which is actually the container of the status bar. So what we can do is to create an element inside of this container by running dot create element. And we will create a simple span, which is just a container for a small text snippet. The create element method will also return the newly created span element. And we will store this element inside a variable on our class like this. Now we are able to access the status bar text element from everywhere in our class with the help of this dot status bar text element. Hence we can do something like element dot text content and set it to some string. I will save the file and then reload obsidian. And now you can see that the word hello has appeared in our status bar. But since the plugin should be able to print the number of lines down here in the status bar, we need some way to access the content of the active file. And to do this we will start by retrieving the active file. I will store this file inside a constant named file and the currently active file itself can be accessed by running this.app.workspace.getActiveFile. As you can see here this method returns a file or null because the user might not have a file currently opened. So let's make sure that the file is not null by running if file and if this file is defined we want to access its content. To get the content of this file, we have to run this.app.vault.read. And here you have to pass the file that you want to read the content of. In our case, that's file. You might also notice that this method returns a promise of string, which means that the method is asynchronous and hence we have to add async in front of our method name. Therefore, our method now returns a promise of void, but actually you can remove the return type altogether. It's not really required. And currently content is a promise of string, but we want the string itself and hence we have to await the string. So now let's try and see if this has worked. I will just print the content to the console, save the file and go back to Obsidian and reload the plugin. And as you can see, there is nothing in our console. And that's because Obsidian first loads all the plugins and then opens the file. Hence, when the onload method is called, there is no active file yet. To work around this problem, we will listen to a certain event and then trigger our code. This can be done by running this.app.workspace.on and here you have a list of events that are provided by Obsidian and we are interested in this active leaf change event. The second argument of the on method is a callback, which itself is a method that will be called as soon as this event is triggered. Hence we will add a new method inside here and put our code from previously inside this method. Since we are using a wait, we have to make this method asynchronous. And we can also remove the async from this onload method. Now save the file, go back to Obsidian and reload the app. 
and now you should see that it has printed hello world. We can also change the file content to something like hello obsidian and if we now reload the app it should print hello obsidian. As a next step we will change this hello and the status bar to the actual number of lines in our file. To do this I will create a new method in our class that is called update line count. It takes one argument, which is the content of the file, and I will also make this argument optional since we might not always have a file. Hence if there is a file content, then we will count the number of lines with this code, and otherwise we will just set the count to zero lines. This part of the code just splits our content into an array at each new line and then counts the number of items in this array, which will in turn equal to the number of lines in our file. Finally, I will update the status bar text element with the updated count. Now we can use our newly created method, so let's remove this console log and instead run this.updateLineCount and pass the content to this method. Save the file, go back to Obsidian and reload the app. And now you should see that there is one line in our document. We can also test and try to add some other lines and reload the app. Now it says that there are 8 lines in this document. But we still have a small problem, because the number of lines doesn't update in real time. So if I removed all of the lines, it, it still says 8. And we can change that by listening to another event provided by Obsidian. Hence we will run this.app.workspace.on again. And this time we are interested in the editor change event. In the callback method we will receive an editor variable. And this editor variable can be used to access the current version of this document. This can be done by running editor.getDocument and then get value. Now we can simply reuse our update line count method and paste it down here. Let's reload our plugin and now the line should update in real time as soon as I enter new lines. So congratulations, you have just built your first own Obsidian plugin. But we are not completely done yet because there are some minor improvements that we can make to our plugin. The first improvement that we should make is fixing the problem that if we open a new tab then it still says three lines even though there is no active file. Hence we will go back to the code and look into the active leaf change event. If there is an active file we will update the line count as usual but otherwise we will update the line count to zero and hence we will just pass the content as undefined. Currently it says three lines and if we open a new tab it changes to zero lines. We can also close the tab and it will revert back to free. Then we should definitely also remove this hello line from the beginning of the video and instead update the text to the current line code. Since this is the exact same logic as down here, I will extract that code into a new method. Hence I've just put the code into a new method that I've called read active file and update line code. And this method will now be called in the active leaf change event and also in the beginning of the onload method. Now we also get the line count directly after re-enabling our plugin, which wasn't the case before. Now that you have finished writing your feature, you probably want to release a new version of your plugin. And the steps to do this can be found on the official Obsidian plugin template repository. So scroll down and find the releasing new releases section. The first step is to update your manifest.json. So go ahead and open the manifest.json file and for example change the version to version 2. In the second step we have to update the versions.json file. This file specifies the minimum Obsidian version for each of your plugin's versions itself. So let's add our new plugin version which is 2.0.0 and also say that it requires the minimum obsidian version of 0.15. In the next step we have to create a github release with this version as a tag. To do this we have to create a new git commit and tag it with this version. As you can see here we have changed 4 files in total. And we will add those files to our commit by running git add dot to add them all. You can now see that they have moved from changes to staged changes. To create an actual commit you have to run git commit and include a message. In my case the message is just count lines. Now we also want to tag this commit with the version 2 and this can simply be done by running git tag and then you have to specify the name of the tag which in our case will be 2.0.0. Then press enter and now our new commit has the version 2.0.0. 
but currently all of those changes have only happened on your local machine. Hence we now want to upload those changes to GitHub. At first we will run git push origin master which will upload the changes from our master branch to the origin, which in our case is the GitHub repository. Now you can see that the count lines commit was successfully uploaded to GitHub. But there are still zero tags on this repository. And that's because we have to upload the tags separately by running git push origin master dash dash tags. If you now head back to your GitHub repository and refresh, you should see that there is one tag. To actually create a release, you have to go to the tags and then select create release. Optionally, you can give this release a title and a description, but most importantly, you have to add a few files to this release. So click on attach binaries and then navigate to your Obsidian vault and head into the .obsidian directory into the plugins folder and into your plugin. Now you have to select the main.js file, the manifest.json file and your styles. By the way, these styles are optional, so if you don't have any styles, you don't really need to upload them. So make sure that the main.js and the manifest.json files are added. And then click publish release. Those three files will be downloaded when you install a community plugin from within the Obsidian settings. But of course this is only relevant if your plugin has been published to the community plugin list. And you can do so by following those four steps here. At first you have to read this document and check if your code follows the guidelines. Then you have to publish an initial version, which is what we just did. And finally you have to create a pull request on this repository. Inside this repository is a file called community plugins.json and there is a list with all of the community plugins. So you have to clone this repository, add your plugin to this list and then make a pull request. Then someone from the Obsidian community will look into your plugin and if everything is fine, your plugin will be added to the community list. And that's basically everything you need to know to create your own Obsidian plugins. So make sure to give the GitHub repository a star, like this video and subscribe to my channel. Also, if this video was helpful to you, then consider sending me some anonymous cryptocurrencies. And with that said, thank you so much for watching and have a great time.